Okay. It's five o'clock. Everybody ready? Okay. Hello, and welcome to the Capitola Planning Commission meeting. This meeting is open to the public with both in person attendance at City of Capitola Council Chambers at 420 Capitola Avenue, and remote viewing is also possible. The Planning Commission and staff are attending in person, and members of the public wanting to offer public comment need to be present. The public can live stream the meeting on the city's website, on YouTube, or on Zoom following the link on the meeting agenda. As always, this meeting is cablecast live on Spectrum Communications Cable TV Channel 8 and AT&T Universe Channel 99 and is being recorded to be rebroadcast on the following Mondays and Fridays at 1 p.m. on Spectrum Channel 71 and Spectrum Channel 25. A recording of this meeting will also be available on the city's website after the meeting. Our technician tonight is Eric. And as a reminder, please turn off your cell phones during the meeting. Thank you. Um, roll call. Thanks, Chair Christensen. I'll take the roll call, starting with Commissioner Esty. Present. Commissioner Westman. Commissioner Wilk. Here. Vice Chair Jensen. Here. And Chair Christensen. Here. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. All right, moving on to item two is additions and deletions to the agenda. We have additional materials listed. Uh, good evening. Yes, we did have a couple additional materials added to the agenda. It included some public comment as well as the uh, memo with uh, revised changes to the design review process, which is under uh, exhibit, sorry, attachment one exhibit A for the draft code amendments, uh, which was also emailed to the planning commission earlier today as well. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving on to item three, oral communications. Uh, the, um, oral communications allows time for members of the public to address the planning commission on any consent item on tonight's agenda or any topic within the jurisdiction of the city that is not on the public hearing section of the agenda. Members may, of the public may speak for up to three minutes unless otherwise specified by the chair. Hi, my name is Goran Klopich. Uh, I, uh, uh, I, uh, play basketball uh, almost every day at J Street Park here, but that's not uh, why I'm coming here too. It's about uh, another issue uh, that I'm observing at uh, J Street Park. It's uh, uh, kids are playing around there and uh, we have to be careful if there is consumption of cannabis. Cannabis is uh, marijuana and uh, other related uh, 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 marijuana products that are being smoked or, or sold. And uh, that's what we have to uh, pay attention for at J Street Park. Uh, I, I don't have any other issues uh, related. Uh, maybe there is uh, something too. Uh, uh, alcohol is prohibited to be consumed in open public, like uh, in parks too. You cannot do that. I know that because I was working for a police department overseas for a while, uh, closely with military and the army together. Thanks very much for listening. Take care. Anyone else like to speak? No? And it, okay. Move. Oh, it's it, this is on on topics not related to items on the agenda. Okay, perfect. Thank you for giving me the chance to speak tonight. I live at 409 Pine Street. My name is Michelle Marie Sazanon, and there is a gorgeous five trunk redwood tree right next door to my property. Um, don't know how long it's been there, but longer than the rest of us. Um, the man who has lived in that house for a million years is lovely. From what I understand, he's been taken to a care facility and his relatives are developing a lot, which is their right. My concern is beginning Sunday afternoon, 
They took a chainsaw and a small tractor to the roots of the redwood right next to the trunk. I have photographs and video if I can submit them. I don't know if I can. Um, my family settled in Santa Cruz County in the 1840s and have been interested in preservation and our heritage ever since. And this red was, is important. People stopped to take photos of it, to hug it. It's part of Capitola and to lose it, to die a slow death by taking away its root system seems to be a terrible shame and really irresponsible of us. Thank you. Thank you. This is uh, Mike Vonnegut. I live at 406 Pine Street. I just want to share the same concerns just around the structural integrity of the tree. Um, like the roots are pushing through the street. There's humps all over our street. Our, my kids love jumping their skateboards on it, but the tree has never been touched because I assume old growth redwood is protected. Um, I know a similar neighbor that has tried to do development around redwoods and it's like you can't touch the roots if it's a significant change to roots. So it's a huge tree. There's a huge chunk taken out. It's just like, I live right across the street. I'm concerned the thing might fall down. I don't know what kind of analysis has been done. I don't know how often redwoods fall, but we do get high winds. Big branches have come down off it before. So I just want to voice my concerns of like, what is the due diligence getting done? Obviously, people can do what they want on their own land. I'm not here to judge that, but just making sure that we're making the right decisions for the community around safety. Thank you. Um. Hi, I'm Marlene Foss, and this is my sister, Joanne Gonzalez, and we live at 407 Pine Street, and we own the Redwood Tree. My grandparents moved into that house in 1954, and my uncle is the one who's in the rest home right now. He'll be coming home this Wednesday, and so we're so excited, and we've been working on the house since, oh gosh, we started taking part probably in March on the house, and yes, we did cut the redwood. We have an arbor, arbor, arborist, is that what you call it, that has looked at the tree, they've suggested how to cut it. We did not cut a log off like that of the tree. We cut this way like they suggested, and we're getting a letter. Um, Sean has recommended that we get a letter that states everything we're doing, and we're doing that now, and it's gonna be turned into him, okay? And we don't want the redwood cut down. The redwood was cut down when I was about 10 years old. I don't know if the city had them do it, my grandparents do it, but my grandparents told us we were little kids that they had to cut it, and they cut it down to about maybe five or six feet, and we used to play on the stump, and we thought that's it with the redwood tree, and pretty soon it started sprouting again, and now it has suckers that have grown around it, and we have no intentions of cutting that tree down or harming that tree. And we're doing it all with the directions from the arborist. And that's, and we're going to, and redeveloping the property, we don't know exactly what we're going to do yet. We're not, we don't know what we're allowed. We're talking to Sean. We've talked to Sean and we've talked to Eric once, um, but we want to get some more information on what we can do. And my uncle has given us full, his full blessings because we want to keep my grandma's and grandpa's house forever. Because that's where we went as children since we were born. And that's where we've spent all of our days and holidays. And my uncle, um, he's a veteran, as I know some of you know. He's a veteran. He served in the service from the time he was 17 years old till he was 38. When he got out of the service, he, instead of getting married, having a family, he chose to spend his time on his fishing boat and to work and help with uh, the veterans of the foreign war serving them and doing their barbecuing. I remember hearing stories because he was never around for our family functions. He was always down barbecuing for them. And he would be just, we've told him, we take pictures, we show him. I go to the hospital three times a day to see him, okay? And we have showed him, we've told him what neighbors have said and what they're doing, and he is just so upset about it. And that's one of the reasons he wants to get home to confront people and take care of this issue, okay? So any questions or anything, we're happy to answer them. Just like I told neighbors, we're an open book. I have nothing to hide, nothing to hide at all. Instead of approaching us and asking questions, instead they have yelled at my grandson, yelled at my son, criticized, taking pictures, threatening to call lawyers. That's my three minutes, I guess. Thank you Sorry. very much. Thank you.
Would anybody else like to speak? To in, or I, don't. Um, I just want to take a moment to um, just to clarify that this is public comment. You're welcome to address the Planning Commission. There's not a back and forth between staff or the Planning Commission and the public. So you're welcome to make your comments now, and you have three minutes. Thank you very much. My name is Alice Sesmon. I'm a resident and taxpayer of Capitola. I usually do wear hearing aid, but I think I heard somebody say, I've been threatening them. I didn't threaten anybody. Um, to tell you the truth, I've been a little frightened about activities next door to my house. And so you can, I guess you get to believe who you want to believe, but if I don't hear something that's true, it's rather upsetting. So thank you for listening to both sides. I, I don't threaten anybody. Just wanted to make my voice heard. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, would anybody else like to speak for items not related to the... Oh, yeah. No, it's a, not... A, yeah. Definitely not. Yeah. Def thank you. Thank you, everybody, for... Okay, moving on to um, the uh, item number four, Planning Commission and staff comments. Is there any staff comments? I have some announcements I'd like to make early because there's some big things happening in Capitola. Um, the Wharf Party, the grand reopening, is next week. So September 25th at 2 p.m. The public is, this is a party for all of Capitola and beyond. So we hope that uh, it's well attended. There'll be uh, food trucks, I think some music, and um, it'll be a, a grand reopening. So it'll be a lot of fun. I I also have some not so great news. We've learned from the RTC that the southbound lane um, from Bay Avenue will be closed starting on September 29th. This will be really impactful to the Capitola community and the Soquel community. Um, and it's expected to be closed for two months. So um, they're just getting the word out. We're circulating the, the public messaging to the public. This is not something the city controls. It's uh, part of the highway widening, which is overseen by the RTC. But we're just trying to get the messaging out there so people are aware because it, it, it will be affecting commutes. Um, and the rest of my updates I can give you during the director report. But I just wanted to get those two items out to the public early. Thank you. Thank you. Are they going to be sharing like alternate path of travel that they're suggesting for getting on the southbound highway one? They, I think they're going to have a lot of signs up to help route people. Maybe someone on the city's website, I guess, that would they would post something about alternate routes. Yes, yeah. So we'll be we we'll be getting all the messaging we get from the RTC out there to the public. Do we have a say? Can we tell them not to send people in front of the middle school? <laughs> you know, I don't have an answer for you on that, <laughs> Commissioner Esty, but um, it, I think. It's hard to control people, so I'm not sure exactly. We'll, we'll have to, but their messaging, we can look into that, and I'm sure we could probably, we can communicate with RTC if the path of travel should be changed. Great. Any commission comments? All right, no, nothing? Okay. Moving on to item five is the consent calendar. All matters listed under the consent calendar are considered by the Planning Commission to be routine. It will be enacted by one motion in the form listed below. There will be no separate discussion on these items prior to the time the Planning Commission votes on the actions unless the Planning Commission requests specific items to be discussed for separate review. We have uh, three items. Item A is the approval of um, the July 23rd meeting minutes for the Special Planning Commission. Um, and do we have a... Or do we Move approval of consent calendar items A, B, and C. Thank you. I'll second that. First and a second. Commissioner Esty? Aye. Commissioner Welk? Aye. Vice Chair Jensen? Aye. Chair Christensen? Aye. Okay, moving on to item six is the public hearings. Public hearings are intended to provide an opportunity for public discussion of each item. 
The following procedure is as follows. Is the staff presentation, planning commission questions, public comment, public commission deliberation, and five decision. Uh, we have a citywide zoning update. Zoning yes, thank you, and good evening, uh, Chair Christensen and planning commissioners. We also are joined today remotely by our consultant, Ben Noble, uh, who will be pulling up the presentation in just a moment here. And these are all tonight, more or less items we've covered in the past meetings with some tweaks from last month or the last session. And then the, uh, as mentioned before, the additional materials for the design review committee and design review process that we've added to the slides as well. So, Ben, are you are you ready? Just a question. Uh, I, I am. Sorry. sorry. Um, will we be handling each item as we go through, or all as one? Great question. We're going to go through the entirety of the presentation, and since this isn't a work session. Okay, um, I just have a comment about one of the items that um, uh, just uh, the design review process. And so I was wondering if we could have a conversation about that just because um, one of our uh, commissioners is not present, I think, has been actively involved in that. And I was wondering if it was appropriate to um, look at maybe continuing just that one small section um, until um, she's present or back and we have a full commission discussion, or will we? go through this just from a process and I just want to ask my other commissioners what they thought about that. Yes, um, that that would be appropriate. I think during the motion, you'll have to, if there's a motion made and you want to continue a certain chapter, you can uh, ask for that within the motion and see and ask for your commissioner's support. So we'll... Uh, but it would be appropriate if, if you'd like to continue that to the next meeting, we could hear it. Um, I was just looking at it from a timing standpoint. Do we want to review that whole section if if that was going to be you know and then it have to be reviewed again or, or would I, and so I'm just, oh, I'm just no I, um, because we modified that slightly I think it would be good to just at least introduce it tonight so that you're aware of the changes and why we made them um, there's we've been doing a lot of work on that section so I think it'd be worth the it, the presentation is not long this evening it'll go by quickly and um, just in case you've got questions about it that we can bring back. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Ben, the floor is yours. All right, thank you. So again, my name is Ben Noble. I'm the city's consultant uh, assisting with the zoning code amendments. Uh, and this item tonight is a public hearing of the Planning Commission um, to consider uh, a draft resolution to recommend adoption of the zoning code amendments, that recommendation would go to the city council um, to consider at a city council meeting. So in staff presentation, we'll provide brief background um, on the zoning code amendments, an overview of the proposed amendments, and then a couple of slides that highlight edits um, to the prior draft. So edits that are new to the planning commission relating to second story decks and balconies demolition and replacement of dwelling units, and design review. So um, as we've discussed, uh, uh, the proposed amendments include amendments that are um, required by housing element programs. And the housing element specifies uh, dates by which these amendments need to be completed. Uh, most of the amendments need to be completed by this year. The proposed zoning code amendments uh, also include some amendments to address other issues um, that are not specifically uh, required by the housing element update, um, but do uh, address some new issues that have come up um, since the zoning code was last comprehensively updated. The Planning Commission has discussed these proposed amendments at seven prior meetings over the last eight months. So the proposed zoning code amendments uh, are contained in uh, as exhibits to attachment one. Attachment one is a draft planning commission resolution. Uh, exhibit one to attachment one are the zoning code text amendments um, themselves. Proposed amendments also include a change to the official city of Capitola uh, zoning map and exhibit three 
to uh, the resolution is a statement of findings related to L LCP or local coastal program consistency. That's necessary because the amendments would uh, affect property within the coastal zone. And when the city uh, submits uh, the LCP amendment to the Coastal Commission for certification, uh, the Coastal Commission needs evidence that the city has considered uh, LCP consistency when uh, adopting the amendments. Uh, so those are the materials before the Planning Commission tonight. And um, within attachment two to uh, exhibit one, the zoning code amendments, there is a, um, a table of, uh, a summary table of all of the amendments that are proposed tonight. And as I mentioned previously, they include amendments uh, to implement housing programs, uh, which must be completed this year. You may recall that the Planning Commission considered zoning code amendments that would affect the multifamily residential zone. Uh, those are not proposed for adoption this year. Uh, instead, they will be considered uh, as part of a separate process that will begin uh, next year. The same is true for amendments that would affect the Capitola Mall site. Uh, those amendments are not included uh, within the proposed amendments considered for this evening. So um, here's some highlights of the proposed zoning code text amendments. Uh, you may recall over the last eight months, we've discussed all of these both at a higher level uh, and in the review of specific proposed uh, amendments to the code. It involves things like corner duplexes in R1 zoning districts, incentives for consolidating lots that are identified as housing element opportunity sites, modification to parking, particularly the reduction of parking standards within multifamily zones and for special needs housing, uh, allowing for housing projects on religious sites as required by state law, modifications to emergency shelters to comply with state law, uh, adjustments to permit requirements for office uses in ground floor spaces in the commercial zones, uh, and then also uh, some revisions to the design review process. There are other amendments included as well, but these are just some of the highlights of the topics that we've discussed over the last eight months. So as I mentioned, the amendments include changes to the official zoning map, and those are limited to removing the affordable housing overlay zone from the city's um, zoning map. There are no other changes proposed to the zoning map, and the proposed changes do not include uh, any changes to the multifamily zoning districts. So as you can see here, um, the affordable housing overlay zone is applied to two areas in the city and in the proposed revisions to the zoning map that affordable housing overlay zone would be removed from those sites the reason for that is that that change was called for in the housing element because that affordable housing overlay zone actually includes some constraints and barriers to affordable housing production and eliminating the affordable housing overlay zone would remove those barriers consistent with state law. Okay, so that's an overview of the proposed amendments tonight. I now will uh, summarize some of the changes to the zoning code since the Planning Commission last reviewed um, the uh, proposed amendments. So starting with second story decks, and balconies. This was a topic of discussion at the last meeting and based on planning commission direction of that meeting, um, we have uh, uh, revised the maximum 10 foot projection requirement so that it applies only in the rear yards and would not apply at the front of the property. Um, we also have um, added that the area of a second story deck and balcony cannot exceed um, the area of the second story habitable uh, building area. So for example, if the second story were 250 square feet, um, the maximum size of the deck could not exceed 250 square feet. And that deck would also have to comply with all other development standards, 
including uh, minimum setbacks from property lines. And so the second story deck and balcony section also includes some new language that clarifies that the 10 foot maximum projection is measured from all points from the upper floor, upper floor walls including along a staggered or non-linear wall. This has come up as an issue when applying the code um, with development projects in the past, and this amendment would clarify the rule of measurement for this standard. So um, the next change that the planning commit that is new to the planning commission has to do with demolition and replacement of dwelling units. Uh, and these changes were included to respond to city attorney comments on this section. And so there are two sections uh, that were affected. One is section 1796 210 um, that contains requirements for if uh, dwelling units are demolished on a property um, and uh, how they need to be replaced and the different state laws that guide that. And that section is included in the zoning code um, so that it is clear to applicants, city staff, and the planning commission uh, that these requirements apply to development projects and it's not something that can be overlooked. Section 1796-220 um, is a new section that has to do with um, no net loss of housing element sites. Uh, so if a property that's identified as an opportunity site in the housing element is developed at less than the density assumed in the housing element for that property, the city is required under state law to identify an alternative site um, to compensate for that development that was less than what was uh, anticipated in the housing element. And this is a requirement that's in state law. Um, it would apply. Uh, to Capitola regardless of whether or not it's in the zoning code, but by uh, including a section in the zoning code, uh, it helps to ensure that the city complies with this requirement and that it's not something that's overlooked uh, when, uh, when uh, development occurs. So that's those two sections that um, were revised uh, in response to city attorney comments. And then, um, the last section where there's been some changes um, is with uh, design review and um, some revisions, some further revisions to this section were distributed to the planning commission uh, yesterday, I believe. Um, and that uh, they include some new revisions to the design review process that's shown in uh, green highlighted text. Uh, and these are based on uh, recent consultation with the city attorney um, where the changes aim to achieve uh, the planning commission intent uh, for the design review process as discussed at prior meetings, while also avoiding uh, new Brown Act meeting notice requirements um, as part of this process. So um, just to remind everybody what the existing process is, it calls for a city contracted design professional to review all new multifamily and non-residential construction projects for consistency with design standards. Uh, and the costs for this review uh, are passed on to the applicant. Uh, and so what's proposed uh, in response to uh, city attorney comments is to remove from the prior draft um, references to a development and design review committee, uh, and instead to um, describe that same process um, as, as a process instead of a meeting of a committee. Um, doing that um, will give the city more flexibility um, to uh, conduct the design review process while not needing to uh, adhere to Brown Act requirements, which will streamline the process and potentially reduce costs and time for applicants. And so in the proposed um, revisions, a city contracted design professional would review upper floors, uh, single family and multifamily additions, new single family, multifamily, mixed use and non-residential structures, as well as non-residential additions, either 15% or more of existing structures and visible from the street or 3,000 square feet or more. And those are the same types of projects um, 
that were previously identified in prior drafts. Uh, it's just drafted a little bit differently to say that a city contracted design professional would review these types of process, uh, these types of projects. Uh, one thing that we anticipate is that if the if the city were to implement this um, new system, that the city would likely um, or could uh, handle costs differently for a single family project um, versus another uh, different type of project. Um, so uh, there was questions at previous meetings about the costs and time implications of these proposed amendments. And um, we anticipate uh, that as currently drafted and envisioned, uh, there would be no change in terms of cost and time for multifamily mixed use and non-residential projects. The city would continue uh, to pass those, cons those costs on um, to the applicant um, for the single family projects, uh, the city anticipates that um, the city itself um, would pay the review costs for single family projects, similar to how um, it was done under the Arkan site committee previously. Um, so there would be no additional costs to uh, the applicant for a single family project. Um, it is possible that the time to process an application may increase for these projects depending on the nature um, of the design professional recommendations. So if, for example, the design professional recommended um, certain changes to the proposed project and the applicant um, was willing to make those changes, that could add some additional time um, to the uh, review process to accommodate uh, the project revisions and continued staff review of those revisions. So that's uh, additional information about cost and uh, time implications of the uh, proposed amendments. And after the presentation, we're happy to provide any additional information if you would like that. So um, that concludes my presentation. Um, just as a summary, uh, staff is recommending that the Planning Commission adopt uh, the draft resolution included in the packet, uh, recommending that the City Council adopt the proposed zoning code amendments, and those zoning code amendments include both the text amendments to implement the housing element programs and to address some other issues, as well as uh, the zoning map amendment with the housing element opportunity sites as called for in the housing element. And if the Planning Commission makes a recommendation tonight, our current plan is to take that recommendation to the City Council uh, on October 10th, um, and uh, at which the City Council um, would have the ability to, uh, to adopt at the first reading um, the proposed zoning code amendments. So with that, that uh, concludes staff presentation. Thank you very much, Ben. Do you have any questions? Or? I do. Yeah. So I have a question of the staff. Uh, we've gotten some letters in with regards to uh, the rezoning, and it seems to be uh, focusing on the density requirements, which we've agreed that we were going to postpone until next year. So could you clarify that for the members of the audience that we're not talking about increasing 40, you know, development units per acre, or that that's a topic that we're not approving tonight? Yes, uh, Commissioner Wilk, I really appreciate that question. We have received a couple, a few comments on multifamily, and you'll recall earlier this summer we looked at, um, we had posted properties all over Capitola and started the discussion as required in our housing element to relook at multifamily densities. Um, at this, after that meeting, the Planning Commission, or at that meeting, directed us to slow down that process that those revisions are not required by the state until 2025 and to uh, make sure that we um, have adequate time to really educate the public about these changes um, and provide plenty of uh, time to get public comment on that. So we've removed that from the 2024 updates. We'll be revisiting it in 2025. The adoption of uh, modifications to our multifamily is due in December of 2025. Um, and so we'll be revisiting that in the new year. Um, the other 
item I wanted to also clarify is in some of the emails, the affordable housing overlay has been mentioned and the removal of the affordable housing overlay. And currently uh, the one site that's really impacted by that is 600 Park Avenue. And again, by removing that affordable housing overlay, right now the affordable housing overlay is more restrictive than state density bonus law. So the state has asked us to remove um, the overlay and it's part of the updates that are required this year. It will by no means change uh, the allowed density on that property at this time and all properties citywide are any applicant can come in and, and do a state density bonus application, but it requires affordable units to be tied into it. So no increases to density um, for the multifamily through the ch proposed changes. Thank you. Um, just following up on that, um, do you have, a, you probably haven't planned out yet how that would be rolled out or um, the community outreach would be, but do you have some ideas that you can share? Just uh, I've heard comments like, is it going to come up on a super fast on a five or seven day or 10 day notice or something like that? Have you, can you give us an overview of what that, what you're thinking that might look like? Yeah. Um, so this, this time around, um, we'll, we'll try to do things a little bit better than the last time around. We'll have uh, an informational web, web page on our, before posting the properties. So we'll get the word out early, um, and informing, um, the general public by putting posts, postings on, people's front yards, again, who, are, who will be affected by the multifamily. That will be the main part of communication to um, so that the public knows that we'll be discussing this. But we'll get that out ahead of time. And we'll also have an active web page ready before we post so that um, information will be available to the public ahead of time. And then I expect our first meeting to be a work session. So just to really hear from, to be able to explain to the public why we're going through these changes, what the changes are, and then also get feedback from the public. Um, the Planning Commission also asked us to relook at our methodology that we proposed over the summer. So um, we'll be relooking at exactly what the densities were that we were attaching to different properties. So that, that will be revised in the update in 2025. I think when you posted last time, you did have a QR code on there, right? So that would just be going back to more active data and stuff like that. Yes, we will uh, have the QR code that will um, bring people to the web, web page to look at the information that we provide. Perfect. Thanks for sharing that. Any additional questions? And with that, we'll open the public hearing. Um, would anybody like to speak to this topic? Hearing none. Okay, closing the public hearing. Um, we'll bring it back to Planning Commission deliberation. Um, so uh, I guess opening up my comment that I had earlier, um, just with the um, we're taking the section of 17.120.04 and having that item just removed, I might be open to have conversation with my other commissioners about that um, as a general comment. I'm ready to discuss it now. Uh, we looked at the schedule and October 10th, they want to approve this thing. I, I just assume we move forward with our recommendation and get our opinions on record. Uh, we accept that we're missing one uh, member of the yeah. commission, so we don't get that input. And this is, this is a, I think this is significant enough change or Process. It's, it's a big process that people are going to have to go through. Um, I think we've got to try to get it right. And as uh, Commissioner Westman's got some ideas that I think we probably need to. And I don't think delaying this one chapter till we just, it would just get approved separately. Is that generally how this would happen? We so I think if we continued this to the October meeting, what we would do is just bump back um, the first reading by the city council so that they all get packaged together. So the zoning code update would go as an entire package, not on the 10th, but on the, I think the 24th. And then the second reading would be in November. So that we have to have it approved by December 31st. Yep. Because it's, There's two meetings in November and one in December. So we do that's it. achievable. Wouldn't hurt the schedule to delay this. No, that'd be fine. 
There's a requirement in state law that after the planning commission recommendation that we have to put that in the newspaper for 10 days. So there's, that's why we couldn't do it on the 10th. It'd be too, too short of a time. I just have other questions about that section. So I thought it'd be valuable just to have that as a discussion. So, so um, I would move to make a motion to um, approve if they want to bring up the um, staff recommendation and then just. Uh, except for the chapter on. Yeah, I was just going to read this afternoon and then add that we would just continue the one section or one chapter section of it. So if, can you, so I can make a motion if we want to, can you bring it up, Brian? What the recommendation was, or Sean, sorry. There we go. So I'll make a motion to, um, for the staff to re uh, recommend to, uh, for the planning commission to adopt the resolution um, recommending the city council to adopt the proposed zoning code amendments except for 17.102.40. Um, and have that continue to our next scheduled planning commission meeting. Before we move forward with that motion, um, Ben, do you have the slide? There was a slide that we, um, just in case this came up, I think there's two sections of code that are impacted by this because right now the way the design. I think it was point zero. I just want to make zero. sure. Okay. Yeah, so, um, but. There's a couple in there. The motion is to modify the section of code re related to the design review process. Correct. Okay. I think that's clear. Thank you. I think there was two other sections that were kind of connected in there at the same time. I'd second that motion. For, for, so for purposes of discussion, uh, you're, you're saying that we need to have 100% attendance in order to address this issue? Well, so if you're not here next meeting, we're going to postpone it again. And if you're not here the next meeting, we're yeah. going to postpone it again. I mean, being that this is a special meeting and, we, and we've been meeting about this for, you know, repetitively, if, and we've all had our opinions, I feel that, I mean, Commissioner Westman had a significant, you know, she had things to offer. I, I think it's, I, I agree with Commissioner um, Etsy and, uh, Vincent as well. Okay then. Yeah. Sounds like we should vote. Is roll call? Well, wait. Oh, yeah. I, we have, did I, we second that? I made a motion, yeah. I, I second seconded it. it. Yeah. That's where I had <laughs> Okay. Commissioner Esty? Aye. Commissioner Will? No. Vice Chair Jensen? Aye. Chair Christensen? Aye. Thank you. Okay. That, is there any clarification? Anything no, so what, what just happened is the, um, the there was a positive recommendation for all the updates except for the change to the design review process. And for a point of clarity, um, you, we should probably make a second motion to continue the design review process to the October hearing. We like to make that okay. motion. I'll, I'll move that we um, review the design review process in Chapter 17, 120040, and I think 050, um, at the October meeting of the Planning Commission. Yeah, October 3rd. Okay. I'll second. The first and the second. Roll call once more. Mr. Esty? Aye. Mr. Wilk? No. Vice Chair Jensen? Aye. Chair Christensen. Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Uh, and just, um, you know, I know we weren't going to get into the, um, you probably had additional information, but a question, um, we, one of the things was brought up about um, looking at the cost. I know it said cost wasn't anything. Did you, was there a scenario what that cost would be to, it look like the city was going to maybe? The recommendation of the city, it'd be nice to understand that cost. So I just want to make sure the next time that we had, I don't know if you had it, but we weren't waiting in tonight, but it, did, would you have that information available? Yeah, we'll expand on that in the staff report. Okay. And timing, I know I said timing wasn't, but. It, yeah, we can, we'll, we'll just focus in on that item okay. on that. I just want to make sure we don't have anything else that we need to really um, debate at that time. Are there 
Any other questions that you'd like addressed at the next meeting? I think it's good. Okay. All right. Thank you. So moving on to item seven is director's report. Uh, thank you, Chair Christensen. I first wanted to let you know what we are projecting for the October 3rd meeting. There will be um, a tree removal application for 709 Riverview um, that's connected to a future development on a site. Um, also, grocery outlet conditional use permit at 210 41st Avenue will be reviewed by the Planning Commission for an alcohol CUP. Um, and then at 510 Escalona Drive, a new single family development, and also the discussion on the design review process tied to the uh, discussion tonight. Um, as I announced earlier, the southbound ramp for Capitola on Bay Avenue will be closed starting September 29th, and that's expected to be closed for two months. The RTC is the um, is the correct entity that's in charge of this, um, but we're helping getting the messaging out to the Capitola residents as it will have a great impact on our residents. Um, if any of you walked by the wharf today or out on the wharf, this is great news. Uh, the wharf arch has been um, installed. It'll be painted, and they're also, today they were working on installing the artwork. So exciting time out there on the wharf. Also, September 25th, next week, next Wednesday at 2 p.m., the Wharf uh, Grand Reopening Party will be occurring and the celebration. And uh, everyone, Capitola residents and beyond, is in, are invited to the celebration to see the um, all the effort and uh, the that's gone into the Wharf by our community and electeds. And it's a really exciting time. Um, and I also wanted to update you that the sidewalk project coming out of City Hall to make it much safer for people to get down to the village, that should be complete in about three weeks. So they did the first pour with that. Um, the Rispin project is coming along. They poured the amphitheater last week and um, it should be completed by the end of October. So before Halloween, which is really appropriate and will be fun to have that um, all in place. And then just a reminder to the Planning Commission that now is the time to reapply for Planning Commission for next year. So um, just a reminder for you and any members of the public that are interested. So with that, that concludes my director's report tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to item eight is adjournment. Adjourn. We are adjourned to the next regularly scheduled meeting of the Planning Commission on October 3rd at 6 p.m. Thank you, everyone.